So, um, John, when we were talking earlier, you had pulled up a, a quote that Matteo had made that kind of talked about technology in the, in the industry. And let's we'll start off with your perspective on that. In a recent article, you had a quote there indicating uh, the ability of the insurance sector to innovate is incredibly higher than the image currently presented. Definitely. And there's a lot going on here with, with innovation, with new technologies, and a lot of carriers here. Help us understand that a little bit. My, my point is that uh, insurer was able in the past uh, to do amazing stuff. Uh, image what they was able, innovating the distribution in the UK market, uh, that uh, in few years moved from intermediated to by telephone, then digitally. Or image what is doing currently discovering holding uh, from the South Africa, they bring their model around the world. Uh, in some countries are acting as a carrier, in others as a service provider, using data to generate value on the insurance value chain and then uh, creating enough value to be shared with the client and the, with the intermediaries. So all that kind of things demonstrate that an insurer can be protagonist of the innovation. At the observatory, I'm trying to share the ideas of the best practices worldwide with the insurers in each market. So I created two observatories, one in Europe and one in North America, to stimulate their ambition to innovate and to, to show them that an insurer can be prota protagonist in the innovation. How is State Auto looking at innovation and, and in particular the use of telematics in, in that process? Yeah, it's a great question. So um, I'm hearing it over and over with the different vendors that we meet here today that insurance carriers typically aren't viewed as being innovative and then maybe even less innovative than typical insurance carriers are the claims folks. So I've got kind of two strikes against me as I'm meeting with some of these vendors. But uh, at State Auto we've made a commitment. We've really switched our culture over the last two years to accept more innovation and be willing to take a risk and get out in front of some of these innovative ideas. And I think telematics is definitely one of those. So I think UBI-based telematics has been around for quite some time. I think uh, in the claims sector, it hasn't been utilized quite as much as it should. So at State Auto, we're really looking at the ability of telematics to speed up the claim process, make it a much less painful process for the customer, and also benefit us from the carrier side in terms of our loss costs and expenses. So John, when you, when you hear somebody like John kind of express their view of innovation like that, how does Octo plug in? How do you integrate into that? Well, I think Octo fits in very well with that, that approach. One of the things that we've been trying to do specifically in the claims environment, and I'll give a nod to Josh and State Auto, they're not falling behind or lagging on claims. I think claims is a driving force in the integration at State Auto, innovation at State Auto. But what Octo provides is from the get-go, we collect data using a wide variety of devices. We understand that the customers have a choice, have a preference in how they want their data collected. And if we're going to be a good partner, we have to be able to provide that service in any one of those avenues. Another thing is, is the collaboration that we bring to State Auto and to our other customers. We understand that Octo can't come in and be all things to State Auto. There are many other, in Josh's ecosystem, for example, there must be 30 other uh, service providers that he is required to integrate with to do his job to deliver his product seamlessly. Well, we're trying to relieve some of that burden by us collaborating with those vendors uh, outside their building so that we can bring the, the best of breed to them and be able to service any of their needs, allow that data to flow through any of their service providers. So do you guys have to integrate not only with State Auto and, and, their, and their systems, do you have to also integrate across other insure tech providers or other technology providers? Absol absolutely. If, if, uh, if we don't integrate with them, if we don't provide that, every customer we service has to go out and develop every one of those integrations. One of the things that we can do to make the system less complex for our customers is to do those integrations, complete those integrations outside. So when our data from the devices, the claims data, the crash data is delivered to Josh, he is able to send that data seamlessly to whatever other provider he chooses to work with. So Matteo, riding on the back of what John was saying, when the observatory meets and you guys discuss kind of the, the 
I guess, the, the, the front edge of the use of data and technology. What do you see the incumbents, carriers, is their perspective changing on how you, they would use some of this technology or how they would integrate it into their current systems? Uh, yes, uh, it's not uh, something that happened overnight. Uh, is, the observatory are creating a discussion with the members. Uh, so I'm delivering them uh, three workshops along the year presenting an update of the research of what are happening in other countries, uh, in other business lines, because I really truly believe that uh, there is a lot of opportunity to cross-fertilize the ideas right. between different domains. So my job is connected dotted, trying to rationalize the opportunities. And what I see, workshop by workshop with the same carrier, is that their people are becoming more engaged in the innovation. So I have one best practice is uh, one player that in Europe started the observatory with a penetration of 10% of telematics in their book. After one year and a half, they have 30% of penetration. So they started with uh, a feeling that uh, was, uh, we have a value in using that data, will be our future or not. More and more, I was hearing in their discussion, not if this is here to stay, but how we can exploit more value. Mm -hmm. So now they are heavily investing on that. Uh, they are trying to connect more players uh, and to have specialized service provider that help, help them uh, to generate value from the data that a telematic service provider like Octo can uh, provide them uh, and can uh, allow them uh, to exploit the value of the data. So they're able to, to take that first step of innovation see how there was almost an immediate ROI effect that, and exceeded expectation of ROI in return, and it feeds more innovation. Exactly, and, and now in the workshop I'm doing, uh, they can be considered now a best practice, they feel a value in continuing that kind of discussion because they have an update on other things that are happening in other business lines, for example on health, on connected home, uh, that, they, that can rationalize how they can uh, pick some of the ideas and translate uh, in what they are doing daily for, for in, on auto. Right, so Josh, how do you guys, you know, you, you guys have a, have a strategic domain that you want to affect the di transformation in. So there's a number of different technologies that you would incorporate into that process, have to integrate. How do you do that? How do you, how do you keep, keep it all straight and keep on an execution path? That's yeah, another good question. So there's so many things coming uh, from the disruption space at us today in insurance and in claims specifically. So for us, we kind of look at three real basic pillars of areas we want to um, have an impact in. And that would be customer experience, loss cost, and expenses. So when we see a solution that comes across our desks that attack all three of those areas, we get really, really excited, right? And I think telematics and some of the other innovative things that are coming at us do that. They give the customer a much better claims experience, which traditionally hasn't been great. And then the carrier and the vendor win because we have lower expenses, we have lower loss costs. So it's one of those situations where the whole ecosystem benefits. So when you look at a, at a technology or insure tech, are there certain markers that you look forward to say, you know what, we can actually begin to do business with those people. They're, they're far enough along in their maturation. Are there certain markers you look for? Yeah, so I think it's a, you know, it's a situation where it, it, it depends on what we're trying to accomplish, but you can definitely tell when you're talking to some startups or maybe further along than others. I mentioned earlier that we had to sort of adapt our culture and accept some more risk. And I think comes along with that a situation where we may take a risk on a startup that maybe doesn't have another carrier signed up yet. We're okay now being maybe the first. And you know, we hear the term, you want to fail fast, and you know, that's okay if we do fail fast, but the best case scenario is that we win fast. Right. And you're only going to do that if you're one of the first to sign up and take a risk. So part of our new culture at State Auto is that we are willing to take that risk or maybe we wouldn't have done that before. Yeah, let's stay with, with you, Josh. Yep. Talk about that culture. Who drives that culture? How does that, how, if, if that culture is different than what it was, yeah. however far back it was, who, who was the driver to convert that culture to something that's more innovation oriented? So we had a new CEO come on board at State Auto a couple years ago, Mike LaRocco, and he brought this culture with him. But I will say it can't just be senior leadership that sets that culture, because you can say you want your culture to be anything, 
but until the folks on the front lines are living and breathing that culture every day, you're not going to be that successful. So when Mike brought it to State Auto, I think it took a little time to get everyone to buy in and believe in that culture. And then what you see is slowly but surely, a project gets rolled out successfully, there's a win here, there's a win there. People start to get really excited about it, and that grassroots effort starts to become of what we do every day. So that's what we've seen at State Auto over the last couple of years, and I can honestly say our culture has done a 180. So how important is it, Mateo, with the companies that are in the observatory, whether it's in the U.S. or in Europe, that how, impo how important is this thing of culture to drive innovation? I think that uh, is definitely uh, an important uh, element uh, in uh, allowing them to experiment things, uh, to go outside and find partners to, to work with. So uh, I think that uh, if you, on that, if you compare the innovation done a uh, few years ago, was ev everything done internally. So yep. few players did amazing stuff, uh, but they was able they was the, the few player that did because uh, they was the only player that uh, probably the culture to the, that uh, internally and the skill. Currently, many player instead uh, evolved their culture to be enough open uh, to take a look outside there w which player can help them. So they don't need to, to control 100% of the value chain. I think that that concept of platform strategy it is one of the big topics that MIT, for example, are, uh, are discussing in the last couple of years. Uh, is one of the areas I'm trying to, to bring also in the insurance sector, and is one of the, uh, the areas I will focus uh, the, the next year of my think tank. Right. So, John, I'm interested. We, you know, I talked to, to Josh about a, a kind of a culture of innovation. Matteo, how incumbents are kind of evolving that way. You guys started off, Octo started off as a innovation play. So your culture was that way to start with. How do you keep it? Well, I think, I think again, along the lines of what Josh was saying, it is from top down. You met Nino Tarantino. You see, you see our, uh, the motivation that the organization has. In North America, the organization is relatively small, 40 to 50 associates. It's very open. That's, uh, there are no silos. Everybody really cooperates with everyone else, whether we're looking at personal, whether we're looking at, at our fleet program, whether we're looking at uh, integrations with uh, Guidewire or other providers, or we're, we're building something new the way we are with this, this claims infrastructure. It's, it's that ability to talk to each other, to listen to each other, and uh, allow your mind to be changed. We talked about that a little bit earlier, and that lives throughout the Octo organization. So we can't cover the entire landscape of innovation here, but kind of let's go down the line and where do you think telematics is going to take innovation and insurance? What, what, what's the application of telematics going forward, do you think? So I'm a little biased that I come from the claims world, so I think it's significantly underutilized in the claims world. I think we hear the term telematics and we often think auto, and I think that makes sense because that's where the majority of it lives today. I think there's a whole different ball of wax that comes from smart homes, IOT, all of the other things that are going to be delivering telematics type of data. I love that guy. Yeah, I would like to hire him as a sales of my, my think tank because I, we are covering all the business lines and all the step of the value chain, so I, I cannot choose one. I, I, I think that one of the great value of data are coming from use that data in all the step of the value chain that you can to generate more value. On the other side, I think that the different business line and different level of maturity. So auto is something that uh, players are doing today. Connected home is a wave that is coming. And I think that in the North American market, the opportunity is massive. Think about the cost of a home insurance. You can uh, really bring them uh, there. Huge value using data from devices. And then uh, will come also the commercial lines, the specialties, think about worker compensation. But we'll take a little more time. It's less mature. It'll be the third or the fourth wave. So the, it's kind of like a beach. The wave just keeps coming, right, exactly. as technology goes. John, what do you think the future of telematics looks like? Well, I think, again, I think there, uh, the opportunities are across all lines in the insurance business. On the acquisition side, on the claim side, on the data uh, mining side, uh, I personally look a lot at claims myself. I think there was a great uh, discussion earlier today about customer experience, what that is. 
sometimes we get caught up too much on the acquisition and uh, customers really don't like to buy insurance. That's not, <laughs> that's not the high point of anyone's day. But when they need the insurance they paid for, is what is that experience like? And I think with the telematics, the uh, instant notification, the instant uh, uh, use of the data, the considerable data that's available, I think what we're able to do, our insurance partners are able to do, is to deliver insurance in a whole new way to customers. That wasn't possible up to this point. Terrific. Well guys, thank you for your time. Josh, Mateo, John, outstanding. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you.